son. Just kill him. Kill him. So I actually Murphy is back as the Zamundan prince seeking his son in the US in this tired sequel to the 80s comedy hit. You wouldn't be the first king to have one. That is true. The original movie, directed by John Landis, had Murphy as the discontented Prince Akeem of the fictional African state Zamunda, obedient to his sonorous father the king, James Earl Jones. It is true. You have a son, Akeem. But yearning for a modern, independent-minded bride. So he travels to Queens, New York with his pal Semi, whose name doesn't get the obvious gag despite the non-stop sexual innuendo, played by Arsenio Hall. Posing as students, they encounter various latex comedy characters, barbers, barbershop customers, etc., played by Murphy and Hall themselves, and Akeem finally finds happiness with Lisa, played by Sherry Headley. This neighborhood didn't have shit. When the white man move in, they got the coffee houses and the dog parks, and my brownstone on Fox Boulevard is worth $10 million. A TV pilot in 1989 starring in Living Colors Tommy Davidson was not picked up, the problem is, this newly discovered prince, Lavelle Johnson, Jermaine Fowler, is as willful and independent as Akeem was at the height of his rebellious phase, and having spent all his life in America, we got the moves. Hey. he has no idea how to deal with the expectations that come with being a prince of a traditional nation like Zamunda. <laughs> I want to thank you for releasing my sister from her canine curse. Add to this Mika's growing disappointment towards her father. She has spent all her life training and preparing to be Akeem's successor. Glorious house of, in, in this glorious house. When her father overlooks her in favor of a son he didn't even know he had until recently, it breaks her heart. She genuinely thought that he is better than continuing the erroneous ways of his forefathers. Practically trained for it her whole life. Whom does Akeem choose as his successor? After arriving in Zamunda, Lavelle tries his best to embrace the custom and traditions of his father's country. But his New York liberal upbringing has become so ingrained in him that he finds his new duties to be suffocating and ridiculous. But if this is something that Lavelle desires, who am I to stand in his way? On the suggestion of the royal groomer, Miram, Namzamom Batha, who tells him the story of Akeem's journey to America to find love, Lavelle introduces the New York flair to his princely conduct. And that changes everything for the better. His uncle, Reem, Tracy Morgan, who helped his mother marry, Leslie Jones, raise him, arrives in Zamunda and brings with him a certain casual understanding that Lavelle has sorely missed. A new dawn had arised in Zamunda, a new sense of hope and change. Lavelle starts to really fit into the role of a prince and fulfills all the requirements to be his father's heir. Ultimately, however, he is his father's child in a way that Akeem may not have wanted him to be, at least not initially. Indisposed. Indisposed. Really? Like his father, Lavelle discovers that the woman chosen for him, General Izzy's daughter, is definitely not right for him. Would you dare banish me from my own bedroom? And chooses Miram instead. They subsequently elope and go to America, where they try to have a wedding at Reverend Brown's, Hull, Shady Church. Akeem arrives and tries to convince his son to return with him, before realizing that he himself is at fault here. Now do you or do you not understand that? Lavelle and Miram's wedding eventually takes place in Zamunda, in the presence of both sides of his family. In the end, Lavelle doesn't inherit his father's throne, only his romantic spirit, but this is enough for him. I do. As for Mika, she overcomes her anger and envy toward Lavelle <laughs> to help him during his trial. And the two of them subsequently develop a genuine sibling bond. Ago I had your spirit. But I may not have been as brave as you, Lavelle Johnson. When General Izzy comes looking for the intended groom for his daughter. Prince Lavelle. General Izzy. Please, allow me to reintroduce my daughter. Oporto. Mika is the one who stands up to him. With her brother absconding and her father gone, 
The eldest princess of Zamunda takes charge and defeats the invaders. When Akeem returns, he correctly picks Mika as his successor, ending the age-old tradition in favor of merit. In the course of the movie, it gets demonstrated time and again how socially backward Zamunda is. Under the reign of Queen Mika, it is bound to experience some radical changes. Bedrock. My king. What are some of the Easter eggs and throwbacks in Coming to America? Like in the first film, both Murphy and Hall play multiple characters in Coming to America. I have a child on the other side of the world. Take heart in your grief. Murphy portrays Mr. Clarence, the local barber in Queens, and Saul, Mr. Clarence's Jewish customer. He also depicts Randy Watson, the lead singer of the soul band Sexual Chocolate, which appears in the film's closing scene. Besides Semi and Reverend Brown, Hall depicts Morris, Mr. Clarence's employee at the barbershop, and Baba, a witch doctor attached to the Zamundan royal family. The now famous New York Mets jacket from the original film makes an appearance when Akeem meets Lavelle for the first time. Family? Or for Zamunda? The film gives the enmity between Akeem and General Izzy a backstory by connecting it with the original film. Imani, Vanessa Bell Calloway, the woman with whom Akeem's marriage was initially arranged, is revealed to be Izzy's sister. And your friend too. General Izzy did not take the eventual rejection well and, since then has been plotting to overthrow the Joffer family from their throne. He didn't dare to move when Joffe was ruling the country. After Joffe's death, Izzy decides that this is his opportunity. Unfortunately for him, Mika turns out to be as competent and ruthless as her grandfather. Of your dreams. My name is Jesus, and I'm the best. All the DJs want to feel my breath. I've been watching you all evening. 